This is Dr. Jerome Corsi, and today is Monday. It's August 28th, 2023. Thank you for joining us on the truthcentral.com. We're all broadcasting every weekday. And uh, let's get started with the very first story right away. Uh, I want to uh, cover the, this. It looks like from comments that Kevin McCarthy made over the weekend, it, it looks like finally... Uh, the Republicans in Congress may be moving towards an impeachment hearing of Joe Biden. Now, I think this is actually kind of important. Uh, up until now, uh, the Republicans in Congress have really been uniparty with the Democrats. They don't want to investigate Biden. They want to investigate Trump, even the GOP. The GOP is not happy that Trump is the leading candidate any more than the Democrats are happy. Trump is a disruptive figure. Uh, right now, the Congress has got a very neat scam going where they just keep printing money and stealing it. How do they steal it? Well, Biden's have this down. They send it to Ukraine, and then you know a portion of that's going to get skimmed off by Zelensky, who I'm sure has got his resort in Cyprus or somewhere else. All of the oligarchs in Ukraine, I'm sure, have gotten billions of dollars that have disappeared into their pockets and the Bidens are standing at the head of that line to make sure they get paid first. We've got the best Congress that and money can buy and it doesn't cost very much. Unfortunately, these politicians sell out very cheap. Not that that's, you know, they shouldn't be selling out at all, but once it starts and once you start this process of this modern monetary theory, and I'm not sure everybody understands the monetary modern monetary theory. The leftist economists over the last 10 years have said that we have fiat currency, which we do. Now, what does a fiat currency mean? It means fiat mean in Latin means let it be. In other words, it's, it's hypothecated. It's made up. It's not backed by anything. It used to be backed by gold until Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971. Now, once Nixon took us off the gold standard, what the modern, modern monetary theory says is there's no reason you can't have deficits because you're going to pay off the deficits with more money that you create. Now, the modern, modern monetary theory says in order to prevent inflation, you've got to tax as much as you're creating money in order to take that excess demand out of the economy. Now, practically, what happens is that it's very easy for politicians to spend, but it's not so comfortable for them to tax. And so, therefore, we have enormous amounts of money being created. We're now at $33 trillion in our deficit, national debt. And that's going to accelerate very quickly. Uh, Biden continually wants to have more billions going to Ukraine. They are now going to have billions going into the next round of COVID. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And finally, the pressure is building on McCarthy, I think, in reaction to the Trump indictments. And Trump indictments, when people saw Trump get this mugshot last week going down to Georgia on this ridiculous prosecution for objecting, the, you know, raising the question of whether the election in Georgia was fraudulent, 2020. Now, that shouldn't be a crime. You should be allowed to question whether an election was fraudulent. Certainly when the Democrats did it, and Al Gore did it in 2000 in the Florida recount, it wasn't considered a crime. It wasn't considered a crime in 2016 when the lawfare people decided that they were going to have Hamilton electors and try to get states where Trump had carried the the electoral college vote to point in a, sl a slate of electors who do were not going to do the what the voters wanted. Instead, they were going to have a higher standard like Alexander Hamilton. They were going to come in and deny Trump that state's electoral votes, even though he won the popular election in that state. That wasn't considered a crime. But when Donald Trump dared to question that the Democrats cheated, 
Now they want to say he's subverting an election. They want to say this is a unconstitutional act. This is treason. Now, that is a perversion of speech, and it's one-sided that, in other words, it's okay for the Democrats to commit crimes. It's okay for the Democrats to object to anything they want to object to, to have critical race theory, talk about racism, 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 and to put you know gender practices, the transgenders in the kindergartens, teaching the children. That's all okay. But dare say that the Democrats are cheating and you will be considered a subversive and they will try you under an espionage act or a hate speech act or some other contrived act where their side is by definition correct and anybody who objects to them, even if the objection is true, is subject to punishment. Now that's totalitarianism and that's where we're headed. And uh, the book I've, and I'm writing books like crazy, trying to get people to understand what's going on here. This one I just got my first copy of, and it will be out soon. You can pre order it, but it is the second volume of what I'm calling this Great Awakening series. It's the truth about neo Marxism, cultural Maoism, and anarchy. And at the bottom, it says ex exposing woke insanity in an age of disinformation, which we're in. Now, the point of this book is to say that it follows, in fact, it looks like, and it's a similar to the book I've done on climate change, which has also done quite well. This is volume one, Truth About Energy, Global Warming, and Climate Change. This book says that the left lies. There is not a climate emergency. They're not giving you legitimate climate science. This book explains why they're lying, because it's neo-Marxism, and they don't believe they have to be held by a standard of truth. The fact that they're wrong doesn't mean anything because it combines it with a cultural Maoism, which is like a cultural revolution. Just the they're positing the values that they think are freedom, that they are they think are higher nature. This is the Uber mensch of Nietzsche. They want to say, here's where we're going to go to. We just have to elevate ourselves and create this world. Postmodernism. A bunch of French intellectuals at the end of World War II said reality is subjective. Therefore, we can create the values we want to create. You know, John Lennon, let's imagine there was no God. Let's imagine there was no borders. You know, join us. We're the few. Many more are understanding this. We can create this world. It will be wonderful. You know, I'd like to say, let's imagine there's no John Lennon. Because you, this is a lie. You're buying into a lie. Wokeism is destructive. It, it tears down the culture. And it is being promoted by those who want to destroy America because they believe America is evil. Now, that's a very, very dangerous theme. And once it catches on, it's like a mass delusion. What, if McCarthy has the fortitude or is forced because too many people are sick and tired of seeing Trump prosecuted He's got how many indictments now? He's got indictments in Georgia. He's got federal indictments. He's got so many indictments, you can't remember them all. And Biden and his family, who have stolen billions, get the Justice Department behind the scenes trying to work out some kind of a phony plea deal where they are not investigated or indicted for the billions that they've stolen selling out the United States of America. That's treason. If we're protecting treason with the Department of Justice, we shouldn't be funding that Department of Justice. We don't need political justice. So I'm saying, and I think we have to call on Kevin McCarthy to begin impeachment hear hearings, or we don't need the Republicans in Congress. We should vote against every single one of them and throw them out. It, you know, what you get next won't be better but at least it makes a statement to get rid of these. And once these people understand they're going to lose their jobs, they're going to lose their cash position, they're going to lose their ability to commit crimes and get away with it through bribery, Mitch McConnell understands he's going to have his money trough cut out. We'll get action. Uh, these people have to have some consideration that they're going to lose. And if they can't be beaten in elections because the elections are rigged, 
if they're on the wink, wink inside, they're going to be reelected even as Republicans. Uh, that's a system that is so corrupt that it can't be reformed from within. And the American people have to just finally say, no, we're not doing this anymore. Uh, Chris, you want to comment on this? I still think a lot of these guys are doing this for show. Uh, it's, it's easy to say we're going to impeach Biden. We're going to impeach Trump. But when the Democrats impeached Trump back in uh, back when he was president, the idea was that there was no way the Senate was going to let it happen. So the, the children in the House decided, hey, let's symbolically impeach him twice. This way it can go down in the history books as we impeached him. The Republicans, the other hand, on the other hand, know, well, look, we could talk about impeachment, but if we do this, it'll waste time. We're not going to be able to fight the other things the administration is doing, and the Senate's going to kill it anyway. Besides, who the heck wants President Harris? Nobody, not even for two months. And that would also clear the field for Gavin Newsom, by the way. And Newsom, we all know how bad Newsom would be as, uh, as a potential president, but there are going to be sycophants who will just vote for him because he has a D at the end of his name, and they'll assume they voted for the first gay president. Well, this is, let's go to the next story, which ties in. Uh, John Kerry has now been implemented, my favorite. You can, I posted the picture of Unfit for Command, the book I co-authored with John O'Neill in 2004, the Swift Boat book, which uh, exposed John Kerry's fraudulent role and behavior in Vietnam. And then after Vietnam coming out and being a spokesperson for the Vietnam veterans against the war, uh, he has now been tied into this Burisma scandal. Uh, Fox News broke this over the weekend that they uh, got a state. Victor Shokin joins me for a one nation exclusive. Hold on. Exclusive. It was just uh, be that was beginning to play the. Which I went to this Fox article, they began to play the video. Uh, Hunter Biden's former business partner, Devin Archer, was. Uh, met with John Kerry just weeks before the Ukrainian pros prosecutor who was investigating Burisma was fired. Now, this was Shokin. And if you remember, Biden bragged that he had a billion dollars in USA that was coming to Ukraine, and the only way they could get it was if they fired Shokin, who at that time was investigating Burisma and would probably have brought criminal trials against Burisma and the Biden family. So they shut down the prosecution in order to get the money. Typical Ukrainian oligarchs committing crimes to get money. Now, John Kerry is in every scandal I can think of. He opposed the Vietnam War, Secretary of, of State. He uh, was giving Iran money. They were flying airplane full of cash over to Iran. They were letting Iran proceed with nuclear weapons. John Kerry has always been in favor of giving Iran nuclear weapons. He was in favor of giving North Korea nuclear weapons. So let's give them access to uranium, see what they do. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to make bombs. And they're going to use the bombs once they get them made. Now we've got North Korea with an arsenal of nuclear weapons and just waiting to use them. And once Iran has nuclear weapons, they're going to use them against Israel. And they're in the process of getting enough uranium enriched where they can put it on some of their missiles and proceed then to create nuclear war. And John Kerry will have been an architect of helping that go forward. Now, Kerry has always been about money. He uh, has said from the beginning when he was in Vietnam, he was going to marry a rich woman and then dump her. He's done it twice, although he has not yet dumped um, Heinz's wife. I would have Teresa Hines, or, you know, she was another just, you know, human being that, again, was married to a rich John uh, Hines, who was in Congress, the Hines ketchup family. These people um, worship money. Now, the meeting with Biden and Archer with Kerry as Secretary of State, which has now been documented by this email, Shokin is coming forward and in an interview with Brian Kilmeade, not one of my favorites at, at Fox, said he was fired at Biden's insistence because of his investigation into Burisma. 
Uh, he's repeatedly said that, I mean, this is something that Chokin has said. I repeatedly said repeatedly in my previous interviews that the then Ukrainian president, Poroshenko, fired me at the assistance of the then Vice President Biden because I was investigating Burisma. Poroshenko understood, and so did Vice President Biden, that had I continued to oversee the Burisma investigation, we would have found the facts about the corrupt activities they were engaging in. That included both Hunter Biden and Devin Archer and others. So the question is, how much of the money did Kerry get? And Kerry was evidently in on it with Devin Archer meeting with him in advance of the move to get Shokin fired, which actually happened. Now, this is a, this is a classic bribery scheme. And we can find this kind of behavior with the Biden selling out America uh, over and over and over again, including through the this Seneca Rosemont partnership that Hunter Biden put together as investment banking, where they actually bought companies like China buy companies that had U.S. stealth technology, which the Chinese desperately wanted. So they have basically sold out the national security interests of the United States by allowing China to buy a strategically important company, which they then get through this, this panel that has to approve the sale of a U.S. corporation to an overseas entity. And again, that panel is dominated by the Secretary of State, and John Kerry was Secretary of State, and he could authorize these deals, blink, blink, to go through because they involve Biden. Had they involved Trump, they would have been investigated. They, they're investigating Trump on completely bogus charges like Russian collusion, and they never stopped doing that. So again, the corruption here is rampant, and I think the American people are sick and tired of it. Uh, I'm seeing a rising anger in the American people, and that will intensify as we go into the economic crisis. Now, if you would please take a look at Get a copy of this book. If you really want to understand what's going on, on uh, you can get this free. There's a number in the home page. Is the coming global crash it's going to create an historic gold rush? Gold is now trading at about nineteen above nineteen hundred dollars an ounce. Uh, it's going to go up. A couple of the top metals traders at um, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase were just indicted for manipulating the metals markets. This book will explain to you what's happening. You can get it free by calling that toll-free number that's right in the ad that Chris is showing you. It's on the home page, And it's worth getting if you really want to understand where things are headed. The middle class is going to be dramatically squeezed. There you can see it. and The number is right there where Chris is highlighting it. Call that number. Get some of your IRA and 401k funds into gold and silver. The stock market could crash by 30% come in the fall. And I'm trying to issue you a warning now. If you want to really understand why this is going to happen, read the book so you get informed of the dynamics of what the Federal Reserve is doing in order to cause a recession because it's the only possible way they can control inflation printing this much money. There's a walking liberty half dollar offer under our sponsors. There's also a a free publication you can get that's a, um, a newsletter about the true value of gold and silver and how they hold their value in these kinds of times and, and accelerate in their value. There's plenty there you can get and information, and you can talk to Swiss America about your needs to be secure or get some assets that are going to appreciate and what's about to happen. Okay, let's do the next story. Now, I'm following a couple of stories that I think are particularly disturbing and that have to do with the Constitution because uh, although it's hard to believe, the Constitution's under attack by uh, our intellectuals in the law schools. So top law schools are now promoting getting rid of the Constitution, which is insanity, but that's what's happening. Uh, lawyers, when they become lawyers, take an oath to defend the Constitution. But um, various of the top 10 law schools, including Yale, Harvard, Stanford, 
are saying, law professors are saying that they have, they hate the Constitution. They're saying they want to get rid of the Constitution. They're making no secret about it, said J. Christian Adams, who is the president and general counsel of the Public Interest Legal Foundation. He also worked for the U.S. Department of Justice. And um, Hans von uh, Spakovsky, who's a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation, uh, the Edward Meese III Center, former DOJ counsel, agreed, said some of these people in the law schools are directly teaching kids that they need to be revolutionaries, according to these cases that these law students are taking. These are critical theory law courses, which says that the law, the Constitution, was written by slaveholders in order to preserve white privilege. And they are, try to argue that the structural nature of racism, which is built into the system, meant even after slavery was eliminated, minorities were still economically punished. And that was systemic. It was because of the racism. Uh, they don't want, like Martin Luther King, free opportunity to, to compete. They want privilege. Now, the Supreme Court has just struck down using affirmative action and, and, and trying to use diversity as a way to get people preference, minorities' preference to get into law school. That does not bother these people. These people are full in on, the, on neo-Marxism. They are waging a cultural revolution so that anything that it is said that they disagree with is criminal. To get rid of the Constitution means that fundamental protections, free speech, I mean, they've got the 1619 Project, which is critical left. It's widely lauded by the political left. It paints the United States as a country founded on slavery. It characterized the nation's founding fathers as racist. The 1619 project has been rejected by many academics, theor, theor, historians, and politicians. Its teachings have been embraced vigorously by the left. It doesn't matter that it's not true. It doesn't matter that it is true in a limited sense. The left makes it true because they believe it. You know, it, let's imagine it's true. We, we know it's true. Well, I'm, here's factual information that these people weren't racist, that they wanted and they fought hard to get rid of slavery during the Constitutional Convention. They just couldn't get it done then. We fought the Civil War. It was not the reason we went to the Civil War. It was states' rights. But by the end of the war, emancipating the slaves was a major issue on the Lincoln's agenda. 13th, 14th Amendment. Both amendments aimed at eliminating the basis of racism and slavery that had existed prior to the Civil War. These are just erased, like the climate change erases the little ice age during Napoleon's time. It erases the medieval warming period. It, these are things that, again, are very concerning, very frightening, because if these people gain prominence, then we are going to lose the fundamental protections that keep us free. They're going to demonize speech. Now, let's couple this with the next article, and I want Chris then to have a, a comment, because it, it, I'm pointing out in these two articles, if law schools want to promote ditching the Constitution, which, which I find is shocking, and then in the EU, these new censorship laws mean that you can be censored by disinformation. Well, now, disinformation is anything that goes against the left's narratives, against the critical theory narratives. So if the left decides that hydrocar hydrocarbon fuels have to be ended because of carbon dioxide, it doesn't matter that carbon dioxide is really not the turning knob of the Earth, you know, the, the tuning knob of the Earth's temperature because they want it to be that way. They think hydrocarbon fuels are evil, or that they're dangerous. Well, they're actually natural products of the Earth. But again, when you get down on this narrative, anyone who disagrees with it is looked at as if they are criminal because they are sided with the racists. They're sided with all the things that are being ideologically rejected. If we start settling law cases on ideology, 
we have become totalitarian. And if you don't agree with the narratives of the left, which may not be fact-based, in fact, are likely not to be fact-based, you will be punished. Chris, do you want to comment? You'll notice that the accusers, the, the those who are knocking people off of social media for misinformation have perpetrated it for quite a long time. We can go back to the uh, the, the fake Russian collusion hoax. You can talk about the, the narrative on COVID. We're finding out a lot of what they're pushing was untrue. A lot of what the those who were knocked off social media was discussing, including uh, very well, uh, highly renowned uh, virologists. They were absolutely correct. Of course, it doesn't matter when uh, when the when the establishment says something's misinformation, most people who don't really uh, follow everything that go to work, they come back home, trying to make a living, they don't realize what's really going on. So they hear somebody else saying in, a, in, a, in an institution misinformation, they'll believe whatever comes out of one set is always going to be that way. That was already in, in that was already structuralized, if you will, systemized. Look what happened to the kid, the the sixteen year old boy with the with a MAGA hat in Covington. Uh, the Covington kid, uh, what, what, the Jesse Smollett thing, the girl who, a girl in Manhattan who uh, lied about her hijab being uh, being pulled off. All this was perpetrated by those who are saying the correct people are are misinforming others. This is a problem. When the liars are telling everybody else they're lying, soon enough you got to realize they're lying. Well, it's one of the points I make in the climate book, Truth About Energy, Cl Global Warming, Climate Change. It, the left critical theory involves a perversion of language so that a, a lie becomes the truth, such that uh, hatred becomes uh, the, this loving, let's advance into utopia, that work becomes evil, that God becomes non-existent, uh, or God becomes Satan. And the perversion of language means that they can call misinformation or disinformation anything they disagree with ideologically. It doesn't have to be false. You can be actually professing the truth. But because you don't hate Trump, nothing you say is of any value. Now, if we live in this kind of an ideological world, you, you can't object to Nazism. You can't object to anything. You can't object to communism. If during a cultural revolution... If you didn't side with Mao, if you dared to be a professor and an intellectual or an artist or anyone who was older and didn't buy into this nonsense of communism, then you were scheduled for re-education. We just asked you know, Justin Peterson, Canada. These people are vicious. And if you do not agree with their memes, if you don't agree with their narratives, as false as they could be, you're subject to punishment. Now let's do this last story, which I think kind of sums up everything we're talking about today. It's finally getting reported that, um, for instance, in this town of Sweetwater in Texas, West Texas, it's um, they, they host the world's largest rattlesnake roundup. Well, now it also turns out that um, this is a graveyard for wind turbine blades that need to be recycled because the wind turbines have died and no longer work. So they're unwanted wind turbine blades. And uh, forklifts have deposited these in terms of just piling them up. They're in a field behind an apartment complex. Uh, and <clears throat> the field is just growing. The blades are between 150 and 250 and 200 feet in length, they're made of composite materials like fiberglass and a binding resin. Uh, each, you know, was cut into thirds to, so that they, um, you know, they still make a segment longer than a school bus. Thousands arrived over several years, actually blanketing more than 30 acres in stacks, rising as high as basketball backboards. Every few dozen feet, a break among the stacks leads to an industrial hedge maze. So this is insane. I mean, this stuff becomes junk. It doesn't work. 
Now, hydrocarbon fuels you burn. You don't have to store. You don't have to create all this apparatus to generate it. And it's much more powerful in terms of its energy impact because it combusts. This, again, is um, some of the intended destructiveness, the intention to reduce population, to depopulate, the intention to go to a lesser form of energy, knowing that it will kill millions of people because we can't use nitrogen fertilizer, we can't produce the food. We take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, we'll have fewer plants. Plants are fundamental to the food chain. We eat various of the plants that grow, and animals and others eat the wheat, etc., or the various plants, and we eat the animals. That's, that's part of the natural food chain. Now, if eating meat is wrong or is evil, we're carnivores. That's kind of built into our nature. If, if, we, if you do that, we're, we become self-loathing. That's the fundamental nature of this woke. It's self-loathing. Uh, they call this the Anthropocene. Anthropos in Greek means human being. So we are the cause of our own destruction. This is the sixth extinction, they say, and we will cause it by burning hydrocarbon fuels. Now, this is nonsense, but it's very powerful nonsense. And um, we're going to end today. I'm going to ask Chris to make a final comment. Um, our additional sponsors, please take a look at My Vital C. You can see my hair has got color back in it again. I'm not coloring it. I've been taking for four years this. Uh, carbon 60. These are the, uh, and I've written a book with Chris Burries, who is the co founder of My Vital C. This is just out now. We're going to just begin promoting it Live Longer and Better. We're going to have a website, which is going to be getlongevitymeds.com. It's going to launch in September. I'm launching a series of telemedicine websites. And by the way, they're bringing COVID back again just in time for the 2024 election so they can have mail-in ballots. I, I'm not sure it's going to work. I think people have caught on to the vaccines, but they want to give the pharmaceutical companies another round of billions of dollars of profits. The Biden administration setting up to say, oh, we've got these variants of COVID. Well, so far, there aren't very many people getting sick from the variations. They're going to have to do a lot better with the variations, make them more deadly if they're going to scare people into going back. Of course, certain numbers of the schools and the woke will all go to the masks immediately and submission. This is about control, social control and submission. It is not about medicine or healing people. It's about the officials at the FDA getting rich along with the pharmaceutical companies. Just like the Ukraine war is about the arms manufacturers getting rich and, and while lying to us about the counteroffensive in Ukraine winning, it's not. Russia's now got territory that will not be conceded back to Ukraine in western uh, Ukraine, which is very favorable to Russia, Donbass, and along the Black Sea, including Crimea and Sebastopol, the port. Russia now controls the Black Sea, and they're going to cut off Ukrainian access to the Black Sea. And that's likely to be permanent unless someone comes to terms with Putin. And Putin's not about to settle to give back land. Chris, any last comments before we wrap up for today? Well, on Putin, people have to realize he wants to push forth a legacy. And he knows he's not going to be around for much longer. So consequences be damned. He wants to push the legacy. He wants to be known throughout history as the guy who brought Ukraine back to the Soviet Union, who, put, who started the road of rebuilding the old Soviet Union. And this is also something that we have to be wary of when it comes to President Biden. President Biden wants to be, he doesn't want to be the guy who screwed up and, and failed to run for president four times. He doesn't want to be the guy that was known as lying about, um, what was it, lying about his, uh, his, uh, his play, uh, graduating in, graduating what, first or top whatever, top 10 in his uh, law school. And he doesn't want to be known as the guy who eulogized a Klansman. He also doesn't want to be known as the guy who helped co-sign the or co-signed the uh, or co-co-sponsored the crime bill. He wants to be known as the guy who stopped the climate change crisis. And he knows he's not going to be around to deal with the consequences or the lifestyle change in ten years or maybe fifteen. That's the idea. And these guys don't care about the consequences. They want to go down in history as the positive guys. 
this is what we're fighting against, and it's something that I don't believe younger politicians are taking into consideration. Well, look, the the fundamental way we're going to defeat these people is with the truth. And we got to keep, that's why my, the books I'm writing are the truth about energy, global warming, climate change, the truth about neo-Marxism, cultural Maoism, and anarchy. These people produce anarchy, and we're going into anarchy. You know, and Black Lives Matter, if you want Black Lives Matter and Democrats running cities, take the cities are going to be unlivable. They're already approaching it. San Francisco is a good example. If you judge these people by what they produce, they produce destruction. They produce chaos. They let crime run wild. They have homeless filling the streets. They are can't, they're incapable of being productive. Every time communism takes over, it, it slaughters millions of people through famine. It's not a particularly pretty way to die. Uh, let's wrap it up. This is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Today is uh, Monday. It's August 28th, 2023. Thank you for joining us, thetruthcentral.com. In the end, God always wins. God will win here too. God created this place. God rules. God can unplug it anytime he decides to do so. And the judgment of God will come. In the uh, spirit of the Second Chronicles 7.14, I implore you, please join me in getting down on my knees, asking God's forgiveness for letting us, letting God be taken out of schools, for millions of babies being killed in the womb. These things should never have happened. They're against God's law. And uh, you can't rewrite God's law to make Satan king. The left wants to do that. It's destructive. And there are consequences consequences are that we'll go through anarchy uh, with enough of us joining and imploring God God will hear our prayers and will heal our land but it's time to start it's time to get actively on this theme uh, we'll be back tomorrow thank you for joining us God bless <laughs>